Okay guys, in this video segment we're going to get into the main parts of the atom, then we're going to get into some of the numbers and associated with the atom, and talk about atomic number, mass number, and that kind of stuff uh, to lead into our next little segment here on atomic structure. So, we're not going to spend a lot of time with this slide. Uh, there are two main components of the atom. We're talking about the nucleus, meaning that inner side, that inner part, that core. Uh, that's where all the mass is located. Uh, is sitting inside that nucleus. And then the second part of that is all this empty space, which is the electron cloud. Now, if you take a look at any picture, anywhere of the atom, in any textbook, on any online source, it is always drawn massively out of scale. Okay? So, if you take a look at that, and we take a picture of it, so you always see this, right? You have this little dot in the center, here's your nucleus, and you have this little electron cloud around it. And um, people draw it sometimes with little like orbiting kind of things. It looks like... Uh, uh, pathways of the, of the solar system, whatever it is, it's always massively out of scale. So if you take a look, the size of the actual atom itself is around 10 to the negative 10th meters, okay? So we're talking about a tenth of a nanometer here, okay? We're talking about tiny, 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 tiny size, okay? However, the size of the nucleus is 10 to the negative 15th meters, okay? So you're off by a factor of 100,000 here, okay? So imagine if you wanted to draw the atom, you'd, you'd have to draw the diameter of the cloud, the dot on the inside would have to be 100,000 times smaller, okay? To put it in perspective for you, if you imagine the new Vikings football stadium, okay, one is finally built, all ready to go. Vikings will go down there again, lose to the Broncos once again. When that gets happening, if you take a marble and put it on the 50-yard line, okay, that would be the nucleus. The entire new stadium, if it was a perfect sphere or spherical in nature, would be the atom. Okay, So it gives you kind of a scope of how big the actual atom is in comparison to this nucleus. The nucleus is tiny, but almost all the mass sits inside the nucleus, okay? Now, quick reminders, our protons and neutrons are inside the nucleus, and of course, the whole region on the outside is the electron cloud where we have our electrons, okay? So again, again, reminders, protons positive, neutrons neutral, and our electrons are negatively charged in that, okay? So that's our kind of key parts of the atom. First person we want to talk about in historical aspect is Democritus. Uh, Democritus was not a scientist, he was a Greek philosopher, and he was credited basically being the first person to have the idea that all matter has to be divisible, and you can break it down into smaller and smaller pieces, and at some point you have to get to an end of that division, and the end of that division is what we now call the atom. We're talking about 400, 400 BC right here, and really not a scientist, not a person who did an experimentation, just kind of developed that idea that there has to be building blocks within nature. Um, move forward to the early 1800s, and now we get the first scientist who really talked about the atomic theory. Um, John Dalton is accredited for being the first scientific atomic theory, and his atomic theory had five parts to it. Uh, the first two parts you see on the screen. Number one being all matter is made of indivisible and indestructible atoms. If you think about this statement, indivisible and indestructible atoms. In the early 1800s, as far as they knew, this was a true statement <clears throat> and this was something that um, held up to all their research. We now know that this is not 100% true. Um, we have been able to show that we can split atoms through fission and we also know that the, the atoms are divisible. We can break them down into smaller particles such as protons, neutrons, and electrons. So his first atomic theory isn't considered to be 100% accurate anymore. Uh, we still use it as a baseline for what the atom is made of, but we also basically have modified it over that time to now include the idea of fission, protons, neutrons, electrons, and even more specifically now into the world of quarks uh, and things that build the protons and neutrons. His second part of his theory uh, tells us that all atoms of a given element are identical in their chemical and physical properties. That sounds like it's a pretty good statement. Um, there's one small piece right here that's a little bit mistaken, though. He says all atoms of an element are identical. Um, we now know that elements have multiple versions of them called isotopes. So 
again, a slight modification on his original theory to basically talk about what an isotope is. Um, you guys have heard of carbon-12 before and carbon-14 before uh, used in carbon dating. Uh, carbon-12 is our stable form of carbon. Carbon-14 is the unstable or radioactive form. So over time, carbon-14 decays and disappears, so we can actually date living or few past living objects by how much carbon-14 is left over in those cells. Um, his statement doesn't really talk about isotopes at all. So you could easily fix this and say that all isotopes of a given element are identical. Um, or sorry, all atoms of a particular isotope of an element. So all atoms of, a, of an isotope of an element are identical. Because carbon-12 is identical to other carbon-12 as far as we know. But carbon-14 and carbon-12 are not identical chemically. Because they have different numbers of neutrons in them. So first two parts, not 100% accurate in terms of what we believe now, but still are very good baseline information for his theory. Parts three and four um, still hold true to what everything we believe today. So atoms of different elements combine in simple whole number ratios to form compounds. Uh, basically this part he's saying that um, to make compounds you can't use a half an atom. You have to use individual atoms or whole number ratios with that. And then <clears throat> Chemical reactions would consist of separation, combination, or rearrangement of atoms. Um, you gotta remember in the early 1800s, the concept of things like lead turning into gold and alchemy was still relatively prevalent. So to come out and say that chemistry only can separate atoms, combine them, or rearrange them, what he's basically saying is you can't turn one thing into something else magically that it all it is is a basically a rearrangement of atoms. So it's kind of a powerful statement for that time period, even though today we, we kind of see this as common sense. Back then it really wasn't. So Dalton's atomic theory has four major parts to it. And then within that, the first two parts weren't 100% accurate from his timeline. From Dalton's atomic theory, he was actually able to develop the first model. So as we go through the notes, we'll talk about different theories and different historical backgrounds and then the models that came from that. So his model was as basic as it possibly can be. He believed an atom was the smallest particle. He believed it was indivisible and was not separatable. Um, so as a result, his model shows that the atom would be kind of like a sphere where it would just be a solid sphere or a ball of mass that was indestructible. You could not break it apart and it had no complexity to it. We now know that his model isn't right, um, that there's more complexity there. However, it was a good starting point in it from a historical aspect. Again, we're talking early 1800s.